Hi, welcome to Survival Crafts. If you've been searching the internet for some cool places to learn about interesting stuff to do with traditional skills, survival, bushcraft, prepping, or even homesteading, I think you might like this spot. I'm Brenda Holder, your host, and we are on show number five. This is part three of our three-part series on dog hair spinning. In the first video, Dave showed you how to use a stick spindle and how to get your dog hair going. Last video, he showed you a cool invention that he made to ensure that you can make your string a little bit stronger. On this video, Dave is going to be showing you how to use a drop spindle. We're also going to put a link down below on an awesome site where a lady does some beautiful knitting lessons. So for those of you who actually want to make your dog hair into yarn where you can knit with it, that is a, a great site for you to try out. She's a fantastic and a really good teacher. Wish I could knit, but I'm not all that good at it. So let's go join Dave and learn how to use a drop spindle. Hi everybody, so Dave here, Wilderness Living Skills Instructor and Wilderness Guide and this week we're going to finish off the dog hair spinning and we're going to have a look at the spindles and I'll just spend a short video and I'll show you how to use these little devices. Uh, the drop spindles I've got here are, are of two different sizes there, the, the main stem coming off, one shorter than the other and in fact the whirl, this round thing at the bottom you'll see there that on the smaller one is about two inches in diameter and then on the bigger one here it's about three inches in diameter and they're about quarter of an inch thick. This drop spindle with the whirl at the bottom has a hook cut into the top much like the hook that we cut into uh, the, the other spinning sticks, the hand spinning sticks that, that, that I actually used before. And we're going to bring you in now. I'm going to show you a close-up of this hook at the top and just one of the modifications I've got on there uh, to make the spinning and the loosening of the knot a little easier. But I should say that on more of the commercial drop spindles that you may buy, some of them come with a little metal hook actually screwed into the top. And the ones I'm using here are, are a little more primitive. So here on the close-up, on my left here, this is one of the actual primitive spinning sticks that we made. And this one is made from willow and I cut the hook in there and I showed you that on, on a video a couple of videos ago. The actual main shaft here, the stem on the, uh, the drop spindle is also made from willow and I prefer to use willow because cutting the hooks in the willow uh, they'll be more uh, integrally, um, structurally inter integrally sound than if you try and buy a piece of dowel from a hardwood store and use those. They tend to snap off. So I use willow, red osier dogwood, or alder for these stems. Here, in white, I've actually painted out the hook. And on the back of the, the top of the, uh, the, the, the spindle here, I actually cut off the back here and I angle it a little bit and this enables me to push off the knot that I will be showing you how to tie later on. The two spindles I showed you earlier, these are in quite an advanced state. I've got quite a bit of twine or wool already spun onto this one. So what I'm going to do just to show you how to attach the cord is take the hand spindle that's like the crochet needle from one of the last videos and I've also got the little wooden spacer here which I use to make the, the dog string. Uh, the hole is not exactly central but that will be okay. This is primitive stuff we're doing here. I can push the, the hand spindle in there into that spacer that I created to make the dog string on the last video and I've got a pretty effective primitive in the field drop spindle. secure the twine on here. This time I'm going to use a clove hitch. If you don't know how to use 
how to tie a clove hitch, I suggest you, you Google it online somewhere and just find somebody who will show you in greater detail. Having secured that to the actual spindle, I'm now ready to, to start the spinning. There's a particular knot that I have to do, I have to bring this up to the top. Like, like a modified half hitch or for those of you who know it, the Leiterman's hitch to attach that to the top. So here I am now set up ready to use my drop spindle while I'm sat down here and we'll bring you in for some close-ups to show you how I join the actual wall here and I'm going to spin it together and then we'll come in for some of the other knot tying techniques here as well. First of all, I'm going to put some tension onto this short length of wall that I've got above the spindle. I'm going to trap it. I have to prevent that coming undone, and I'm just going to fluff out the ends here. Join it onto the actual handful that I've got in my hand here. This has already been carded. I showed you in a couple of other videos. So I pull out some fibers, trap the two ends together, I can spin, put more tension on, trap it. I'm going to bring both hands up to this area and I'm going to let this cord twist. I can feel a lot of tension on this cord and it wants to bite in to the massive wool that I've got in my hand. So if I let that spin in, grabs the fibers and wraps them and pulls them together. So I can put more tension on trap. I like to bring both hands up and, and I push apart, I push apart my two middle fingers here while holding the mass with my thumb and index finger of each hand. And I pull them apart to the required amount and then I let go. Now with the drop spindle I can get several of these in which speeds up the whole process of making the wall. I lift and then twist again. I've got to keep the tension in this yarn here the whole time. If the tension does loosen up, especially near the top here, everything will come undone. You'll see the spindle drop to the floor. And then all you do is pick it up and just join the two ends together. As this gets longer, you move it further down your legs there to trap, pull apart, drafting here, and go. When I get a good length of it, I can come to the back of the spindle at the top and I push this off and then put the pointy end of my belly button and then wind this on. Trap it. my half hitch there, spin, drop again, and back in, start drafting. Sometimes depending on what chair I've got, I, I let it actually run down my leg now, so I get a spin going, let it run off my leg, and get all fancy with it easier to do that with the heavier spindles. Come to the end here of the 
nice of fibers in my hand. A little bit of a spin there. Push it off the back. Wind it on. Now ready then to join in my next handful of fibers. So for this time, I will bring you in and take you through a close up on that and we'll show you the, the knot that I tie on the top here. So here we are in close up mode. I'm going to show you how to join the mass of fibers in my hand to the actual twine that I'm spinning. And what I do first is spin the, the spindle, put some tension on the actual twine coming up, come up with my other hand and pinch that, and then fluff it out. Once that's fluffed out, I can introduce the fibers from my other hand pinch them together and I will spin the spindle again come in just release and the fibers will bind together spin trap using my center fingers pull apart and bind it pull apart see how I push on those central fingers to actually draft out the fibers. Here I'm at the point I want to release the knot on the top of the spindle. So I'm just going to turn it over, push it up the back of that tapered section. Now I can wind the string in. Cord or twine or wool. Now I'll take and form my knot. The way I do this is to take a loop, come down, I'm twisting up on me here. I want to try and show this to you. So there, I take a little bit of a bite in the rope. I'm going to turn it back on top of itself to form a loop. Come up. And over back on itself. I'm now ready to spin and go through the whole process again. So that concludes the series on dog hair spinning. But I want you to actually remember that we could have used any fiber there. And here I've got some flax fibers from the flax plants that grow in our garden. And I've been through it a whole process of retting, of combing and breaking the fibers up so I get these very fine fibers. I spin them together in exactly the same way that I showed you with the dog hair. And we'll show you that in the later video. But to wrap up this one then, uh, we're still going to be staying with textiles and Brenda's going to be moving on and showing you some, um, some sewing techniques, some beading techniques and how to, to sew raw height uh, wrong, so how to sew buckskin together and make buckskin jackets. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed that video. And if you like what we do, we would love it if you would subscribe, share, give us a like, put us on Facebook, put the videos in your website. It's really great if people share what we know. The more we all share, the more we can all gain knowledge together. And if you think that there's anything that we can offer in terms of other videos that we can do, something that you might be interested in, why don't you drop us a line and we'll see if we can make that happen for you. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video.